Okay, so with that in mind, um, okay, Richard talks about the three T's. And I think the three T's kind of talks a little bit about what Chauncey's talking about. Tolerance is one of them. Technology is the other. And talent. And tolerance, whenever you're in a creative environment, people have to be tolerant of whatever people, wherever they come from. Once again, gays, lesbians, uh, black, white, poor, rich, and what's that again? Ghetto. Ghetto, <laughs> you know, whatever. And when you are tolerant, there's more inclusion, there's more uh, collaboration that can happen. Then uh, technology, well, look where we're at. Look, look at DC, look at Atlanta. These are places that are full of technology right now. I mean, people, you can basically get a laptop and change the world, right? So imagine Boston, with all this creative in, uh, technology that's here, right? So, definitely Washington, <laughs> and definitely Atlanta. And then talent. I mean, between September and June, or May, this is probably one of the most important cities in the world, with all these students here, right? All this intellectual capital that's happening, all, all in one time, all this creative energy happening all at one time in one place. So, and, and definitely with DC, and definitely with Atlanta, so talent. But this is what I was thinking. When you were talking about Jesus, how he had these encounters with people, and he never promoted his agenda, I think what Jesus was doing was speaking to the creativity in that person. His presence with that person was a call for that person to then be creative in their own way. Mm. Um, so if there's a way in which your company mm. can speak to the creativity in the people that you're dealing with, mm. without ever saying, I want you to follow my way of doing things, right. right? Then what happens is you will get more agents right. birthing their visions because right. you're not speaking so much like, this is what I want you to do. You're speaking like, okay, this is who I am. Do you sense something going on? Right. Are you getting uh, inspiration? Are you getting kind of, uh, is something happening with you? Right. And, and, every, and, and, and everybody might not express it the same way, but I think people, if the pitch is, is right, they will start to get a sense that they need to do something. Right. So how does your company speak to my creativity? Right. One thing that I thought of when you guys were talking earlier, it goes with this, is that you basically want to help facilitate choice. But whatever these three sub um, mm -hmm. sub uh, categories. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which is kind of what Jesus did, he facilitated choice. Right, right. Do you want to go my way or do you want to go your way? Right. Right. And, and and along with that, he was speaking, he's hanging out with his creation, which is interesting. Right. So he's hanging out with his creation. So how can you hang out? It's like when the spirit's working through me. And I'm hanging out with Kiara. The spirit in me is communicating with the spirit in her, right? right? Just like how Jesus, his presence meant that the spirit was there. Right. Right? Right. So the spirit being there means that immediately it's, communic it's communicating, his spirit is communicating to the spirit in, in his creation. Right. Which is kind of mind-blowing. It is mind-blowing. Um, but I think there, if there's a way that that can be um, accentuated, right. that this isn't just an encounter just to talk about creativity. I'm not just here right. to just be why the creative dude. There's right. something happening with me even as I'm speaking right now right. that is connecting with what you're talking about. Right. Right? Right. To me, that, that's something I call the hook. And the best way to put it is that you don't get a fish on your boat until you got a hook in it. Right. And so now what you're talking about is reaching people, giving them a choice. But first you have to have the hook, right. the thing that's in them that forces them to come your way. Jesus had a hook because he knew what was going on inside them. Right. So every time he spoke, he spoke into them. Right. Now, 
even if they don't want to go, the natural curiosity of having somebody who's already into you is to find out why he's into you. How did he know? Right. Those that now to want to know these things, you have to come forward. So now he's already got you. Right. Then when the choices come because you make the decision to follow the hook that's already in you. Right. And mm. so basically the way wow. society is, is that hook. what's right. in it for me. Right. And so that's the hook. What's in it for you is the hook that brings them in. Right. Once you get them in, just like sheep, you can move any way you want. Right. But you got to have the hook. And how it came about is because the exact same thing I'm talking to you about just doing the, uh, with the ex-offenders. I know the hook. I have the hook. Once I got the hook, I know I got them because I know what's going on inside of them. But I know how they, I know the thought process that they put in front is not the real thought process. You wasn't all that when that door slammed for the first time and you knew you weren't going to see your baby, your girlfriend, or your mama for the next three years unless they broke the Kansas. Mm. So now all of a sudden you're putting this front up, but I got a hook behind all that that says, you know what, I know what was going on in your head. Now you want to know how I know, but as you come to say how I know, I start to show you choices of not having to be this way. Right. Now, now, now you're talking about can you make the decision, but first you got to have the hook. Right. What's in it for me? Well, see, the thing for me that's I, I, mm-hmm. the thing for me that's mm-hmm. different about this and that is the people you're talking to are much more open to listening because they know they're in a situation. Everybody. Everybody has to have a hook. The same way you don't even watch a commercial. Right. Unless it has an interest in something that, that you need. Right. What I'm saying, though, is the people that you're talking to, because they're in the position that they're in for you to meet them, are much more open to being approached with a possibility than people who feel like by every glimpse or for, if you looked at their resume, if you looked at their bank account, maybe if you looked at where they live, they're doing well. Right. So the design and the level of intentionality for creating that hook is going to take uh, all of the people in this room, which is why you're here. And we know this because we go to church with 400 of these people exactly who, who when Pastor Gloria talks to them, mm-hmm. like you were talking about, the first thing they say is, she, she is not talking to me. And if this church becomes the kind of church that really caters to Laquita, then I'm in the wrong building. But See what I'm saying? Uh-huh. So I, I can't, I, I, I have to be really, really careful how I even acknowledge that there is this bait hook fish thing going because these people and most of these people you know these are better lights that we're talking about in a large case not all of them but a, a large sense of them so we've got to use what we know about how that congregation likes to be talked to and doesn't like to be talked to mm. to design put all of that in the design that allows them to feel like no 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 I'm not trying to take anything away from the things that you love about yourself and the things that you've achieved in fact I think there's even more to you than meets the eye. It looks like you've got to go the other way with them. You know what I mean? Because I, I think the people who are doing, I think Jesus has this way. If he's talking to someone who's down at the bottom, he doesn't speak to them from below where they are. He speaks to them, he sees them in a better situation. Right. And I think when he's talking to people who are way up here, he doesn't go beyond where they are. He actually goes kind of underneath them. underneath them and says, well, um, actually, yeah, he's actually there, well, but, I, but he does it in a way that doesn't offend. No, he does it in a way that says, yeah, he's, he says, the best part of you, you don't even know about yet. The, the part of you that is actually charismatic and powerful, it's not your money, it's not the fact that you're a king, it's not the fact that you've got servants, it's not the fact that you're a CEO of a company that has a $6 billion budget, that's not your value. He has this way that he gets in there, that's the hook. It's the hook. Well, that's the, that's the exact thing you talked about, your hook. Yeah. You, you talk to, not them here. You talk to the part that they're not using. Yeah. The part of them, that, and I know, I know what you're talk, talk, talking about. Yeah. The people that really want to do more for people. Yeah. Yet their piousness yeah. won't allow them to step down low enough yeah. to put their hand down. Now, 